Welcome, and thank you for taking a few minutes today to focus in on the things of God. Today I want us to think about something that I'm sure all of us need to work on at least a little bit, and that's the area of patience. We're going to look at a passage in James chapter 5, and we'll start reading in verse 7. The Bible says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop patiently, waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. It's obvious James was writing this part of his letter in light of the fact that Jesus was coming again. Because one of the things that those people needed to hear was that there was a day coming when they were going to be rewarded and that their enemies were going to be judged. And so James made an appeal, and he talked to them about patience as a key concept in their everyday life. In Exodus chapter 34 and verse 6, the Bible says the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. Patience is an attribute of God. Even though sometimes people want to uh, tag God with everything that goes on that's bad, we forget, I think, too often how long God has actually put up with us and all that we do. But in the Bible, patience is also a distinctive characteristic of a Christian. In fact, it's one of the fruits of the Spirit mentioned in the, in the Scripture. And the type of patience that's being discussed in the passage in James is the type that we use to hold us back when people are persecuting us. And the references that James referred to were the prophets and Job. And those examples aren't people who were facing persecution and doing nothing. Patience and procrastination aren't the same thing. Some people try and excuse their laziness by saying that they're just being patient. But that's not what James is talking about here. He's talking about people who are being persecuted and then telling them to be patient and not retaliate or be resentful. And James used the example of a farmer, which in our area, I don't know where all of you might be watching this, but in our area, that's something we can identify with. The farmers plant their crops and then they have to patiently wait to see the results. But producing those crops isn't done by sitting around and being lazy. These farmers are always working. They're preparing the soil, they're planting the seeds, they're keeping the weeds out. And for all of that work, the growth of the plant ultimately depends on the Lord. So the conclusion that James comes to in, in verse 8 that we read, he told these people to stand firm. Or if you're reading in the King James Bible, it says to establish or strengthen your heart because it takes all of the courage that we can muster to stand firm while we're waiting for the Lord's return. In the first century, just like it is today, the believers thought that Jesus was going to come back very soon. In fact, when you read about the ascension of Jesus, the disciples were staring up into the sky even after Jesus had gone out of sight. I believe part of the reason, at least, is they thought he was coming right back. In fact, the, the imminent return is part of the reason Paul wrote the letter that we know as 1 Thessalonians. He was talking to people who were worried about what was going to happen to believers who, had, who would miss the rapture, possibly. And today, even though we still think, as every generation before us has, that it has to be now, it takes a lot of patience to endure what the world dishes out. You know, when you look at the things going on in the world and you think <laughs> it can't get any worse than it is, but unfortunately, I'm afraid it could. 
So while we're waiting, we have to be reminded not to complain, and especially, as they pointed out here, not to complain against each other. We can't blame our troubles on each other or envy people who have less suffering than we do. We have to remember that God is in control. And I think that's why James points out the ultimate victory. Because God is control, there's ultimately a victory in patience. It's always a comfort to know that other people have gone through the same thing that we're going through. So James reminded those people about the prophets and Job. Those people could never have gone through the things they went through if they had not had patience. And James reminded them that people who endure to the end will be blessed and ultimately will be saved for all of eternity. You know, when we talk about patience, we often describe someone who has a lot of patience as having the, the patience of Job. But Job was anything but passive. When we read about the drama of his life, you can see that uh, he did start to resent a little bit of what was happening to him. And he started to question the arguments of his so-called friends. But he really uh, agonized over the thought that God would forget him or that God would forsake him. And the fact is that in spite of all the questions Job may have asked, he never lost his faith in God. In fact, Job made the statement, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. In spite of everything that Job had been through, he never lost the grip of his faith or his belief in God. And that's the same patience that we need today. And we know that that kind of strength can only come from God through Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes I'll make the statement, and possibly some of you have too, I'll say, you know, I don't know how people who don't believe even get through the day. Because it's the most important part of who we are. And we know that that's who God wants us to be. But you know, I, I know that when I'm saying these things, there may be someone listening to this who's never even received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Listen, we're gonna have a prayer here in just a moment. And I wanna challenge you to open your mind and your heart and let God speak to you in a special way. Let God lead you into a saving knowledge of, of who he is and who his son Jesus is. You know, the patience that we, we ought to be having can only come from God. It's a gift of His Spirit. And if you haven't become one of His children, why not do that right now? Would you join me as we have a word of prayer together? Lord, we thank you again for the blessing of another day. We thank you knowing today that in all things you have the control of all things, ultimately. And regardless of whether you come back today or whether it's a hundred or a thousand years from now, Lord, we know that ultimately your will be done. And so that's what we would pray in our lives. I pray for those specifically today who've never received you as Lord and Savior. I pray that you would speak to their hearts. And I pray as you lead us through the rest of this day that you would use us to further your kingdom. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.